Hey you guys, it's Nathan back with another video. Today I'm sharing with you guys this photo and how I added the images on top of the photo so you're able to not just see myself holding the product, but you're also able to see the close-ups of the products as well. Now what's very important to also note about this is the audio that you're hearing today is actually coming from that microphone. I made a review on the product. So I have a link down to that product uh, down below where you guys can see my full review. But as you can see, these images are able to be moved and manipulated however you want because I took the time to cut them out of the Amazon uh, page where it showed the different objects. And this is what that picture looked like. It looks like a normal picture you'd see on Amazon but I'm able to remove the background and all the unwanted objects in this image so I can end up with that perfect result. And I use that thumbnail for the video that I put up, that Fifi and Lavalier uh, lapel microphone review, where you guys can see what a $22 lapel microphone can give you with all the extra adapters and things like that as well. So hopping back into the editor, uh, let's walk through how I made this photo to begin with. So I took the photo, um, it's a nice photo of me behind my desk and what's important to remember is yeah I'm holding up the product but you know it's just a box with a logo on it you know it doesn't really tell you too much about it if you're looking it up you're like oh there's someone holding a box well uh, first I crop in I crop in it's a 16 by 1 ratio um, and that crop allows me to be closer up and so they can see my face nice and clearly and you know you insert that microphone you insert those new images that you want to put in there now how did i do it well i go over to the cutout tab and i'm going to begin by cutting out the image so i have the brush selected i go over here and i am removing that stuff at the bottom because i don't need that in the image i go to the magic eraser click on that and i can move the tolerance slider up or back down however i want to do it even after i've clicked the microphone or the place that I, the place that I want to remove and I can keep removing and removing and removing to my liking and what's really nice is you're able to uh, go back to the brush if you need to zoom in close and you need to see something just just so fine and be able to remove just certain parts of it but it's really nice there is the lasso tool around uh, but you have to draw a circle around the object that you're removing so some people just don't use that, but there's times where that can be a helpful thing as well um, to, you know, draw a circle, remove that portion, you know, it's helpful. So I think that's really helpful. And that's how I was able to remove that stuff, save that. So instead of, you know, doing something really dumb, I accidentally, you know, selected too many here, but instead of just putting in the image like itself, where that would look so unprofessional, it would look really lame to do it correctly you know, you go into here, you have this edited, and you're gonna go and save that. And then you'll be able to go and insert it into that image that you're working on. So back into the editor, I go to images or to image, and that's gonna be in the tools tab. Uh, I mean the insert tab. And in the insert tab, I can hit image, and I can go to insert, and I can click on that microphone. It inserts it into the image. I can draw it bigger. I can make it whatever size I want it to be. Um, and then for the actual like finished product, you know, you can rotate it and things like that. But for the finished product, I actually right clicked and I went over here to rotate and I hit flip uh, horizontal and that's helpful. So then the microphone is actually facing towards me instead of away from me. So I felt that that just made it better. It doesn't, you know, change the product or anything. It's not manipulation. It's saying, yeah, that's how I decided to end up doing it. And, you know, you can make it whatever size you want angle it just the right way. You can see down here with these white uh, splotches, I'll zoom in here, and these white splotches, I have gone ahead and um, you know you can go and remove those. I must have forgot it when I was editing it originally, but you can go over here to the magic eraser and just click inside here. So you just go click, you go click, and you go click, and there you have it. You have those removed, and then that will be transparent as well. So. I should have probably done that, but uh, in this case I didn't and I decided not to you know, take the time to do that. I didn't notice it up front. Now what else is helpful is you want to be able to distinguish you know, the object that you put in from the background. You don't want it to like bleed in and you're like, hey wait, where's the clip and where is you know, his background, like all that stuff. So one thing you could do, like for that microphone right there in that photo, you can go and put a blur on it. So 
you can turn the br this brush size, but I can go in, select whatever I want to have an extra blur put on uh, the image. And there you go, you have a blur. So I'll show you uh, what it looked like before and what it looked like after, but you can definitely see it's clear here. You know, it's fairly decently in focus and you can hit redo and uh, give it a second to think and it's going to be much more of a blur and it's going to be hard to see what was that. Uh, so then you can put your microphone back in front of it um, and that's when you're going to be able to see that good distinction between the two. You're also able to do things like the drop shadow over here on the right hand side where you have image. You can go over to drop shadow, uh, just select that and you're able to uh, just have that um, you can see it, you know, that microphone without it or with it. And you can definitely see that you can change the color of it to whatever you'd like, whether it's a green or a blue or something like that. If you wanted it to start to kind of feel or style, it gives that nice glow effect. And some people love it, some people hate it, but it's there. It's just another tool in your toolbox to be able to use to make your photos just that much better. Um, so like if you were gonna add like a certain effect to your photo, uh, here's one that's kind of a blue effect and if you thought oh, yeah, that's great I like that blue there and then I'm gonna add the glow there You know that could be a cool kind of artistic thing you could do to the Image in this case now. I don't really want that uh, But I'll put the drop shadow on there. and I'll make it a little little bit of a gray All right, so I think that looks pretty good I'm gonna go to images again, and I'm gonna put in just the jack of this lapel microphone I'm gonna insert that in there maybe that's a little too big all right perfect and then you know the way i did that was i just went over to the brush and i erased out that uh, microphone and so then i saved it just separately and when you save it then you're able to go and put it in and you don't have to have the two tied together it's separate however you want to put it so in this case i'm going to have it coming down from the top of the image uh, kind of at a 45 degree angle you know i think that looks pretty good you can add different effects different uh, filters on the image if you think that the original image could look better if you changed it you know in this case not so much I really like how this turned out let's put a drop shadow on that and then we'll be saving it out um, and then uploading it to YouTube but it's always just so important for you guys to remember that adding those different images are really useful you know you can go to that Amazon link or you can go to um, different pages to find those different transparent images or even if they're not transparent being able to remove them uh, it's so helpful because then instead of just a picture of you just holding up something you can take what they give you there like on Amazon or on these different sites you're able to use those to help showcase yes this is what I'm editing this is maybe the tutorial that I'm doing maybe this is the product that I'm reviewing and I think that it just makes it so much easier for people to say, hey, you know, here's the video that I made. And instead of people having to click in and find out what it is, instead you can make it so clear just from the thumbnail itself. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys to be able to see. Um, you know, you guys can definitely check out the video itself, but here's kind of the final result. Um, you can definitely see, okay, so there's me holding up the box, has the products on the side. You know, what would you want me to do differently? Any thoughts, any suggestions? Um, but totally open to hear all those different things and I just think it's helpful for you guys to be able to uh, look at those different options because uh, there are so many times where you feel so limited with the editing that you're able to do and this kind of helps to open things up to say hey you can add something in you can make it look good um, and it's great now as far as for uh, this image when you are putting it into YouTube they want you to do it at a certain resolution so that's 720 by uh, 1280 resolution so that's a 16 by 9 image that's the ratio and the resolution that's 1280 720 all right and then over here you want to go over and hit save save that out and then upload it to youtube and add that custom thumbnail which is so crucial and so important definitely check out the video it's linked down below if you guys want to watch the review let me know what you think of this audio um and hopefully it sounds good to you guys hopefully that this video was helpful for you guys to just have a tutorial of how to make a solid YouTube thumbnail, how to add different effects in there. But thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.